Today on Lunch Break, what would you think if Facebook ditched its likes feature? They're kicking it over, and we'll chew on that. Also, one parent's interesting twist on the sleepover. It went viral. That's on the menu. And Austin Love introduces us to the happiest person he knows, a guide to living a happy life. Lunch Break begins right now. It's your lunch break with Jay Crawford. Hello again and welcome to lunch break for Wednesday, October 2nd. I'm Jay Crawford with Holly Strano and how I can't wait to find out how to live a happy life. <laughs> I always collect tips on how to be happy. I call it wine. <laughs> that's one. <laughs> right. And that usually works. Uh, that's coming up later in the show. Yeah. We're very excited that uh, you're joining us on YouTube as well as Facebook. Like us. That's right. the proper lingo, right, Stephanie? Like us. Do you that's, know that's what this a, is? Um, I'm learning. Okay. I'm learning. So I've we're happy that you're joining you. us on YouTube and Facebook. And we also encourage your comments. If you want to weigh in on what we're, we're saying. We're literally streaming live right now. That is what I'm told. Yes. First on today's menu, uh, a royal lawsuit. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan suing British tabloid a British tabloid claiming that the paper actually unlawfully published a private letter that Meghan had sent to her father about the status of their relationship. We know that that's been much talked about. And basically what's going on here is Meghan and Harry want to say, wait a minute, this, this, is, this was a private letter, this is, mm. and nobody has any business reading that. Right. So they're filing a lawsuit. They're going to pay for the lawsuit out of their own pocket, and any award financially that's given, they will donate to an anti-bullying charity. So, Holly, I'm putting you on the jury. Do you think that the newspaper, this is in bounds for the newspaper, or do you think this is out How of bounds? How do they get the letter is my question. I mean, that if is someone a good question. stole the letter... Or maybe the dad leaked it. I feel like we don't know everything to this story. Yeah. But there's a quote that I I love quotes. Uh huh. Right. I've told you this. You do, you have. And there's a quote that says, "Privacy is power. What people don't know, mm -hmm. they can't ruin." So part of me says, I like that. "Leave them alone." You know, yeah. some some things really are sacred, but I, I have a little bit of an issue with how this did get out in the universe. Yeah. See, and I do too. If the father leaked it, then. Two, one of the two parties was okay with it, right. but my problem is the author of it was not okay with it. She well, didn't authorize this to be published, and I kind of think that this totally invades her privacy, and I hope she wins look, the lawsuit. They're not the Kardashians, they're the royals. There's a yes. bit of a difference. They're, I don't think they're trying to make a living off of this stuff. No, they're not. They want to be private, and they also they don't want to benefit financially from any award. They've they already said they're going to give the money yeah. to an anti-bullying charity. So yes. we'll keep our eye on that and we'll let you know how that goes. Next up, ditching likes on Facebook. They're experimenting with this, Holly, in Australia. You'll no longer be able to see the number of likes. The poster will still see them, but everyone else won't. Very interesting idea. Everyone says it's coming here soon. Instagram's also toying around with the same thing in seven different countries. Your take. Do you I like or it. dislike? You love it. I Good. love it. Yeah. And I'm I love you. it because I think of my children. Now, they're not on Facebook yet, mm -hmm. just like you aren't on Facebook yet. I'm not. Today. I'm the last we're, adult. We're, we're going to get them there. <laughs> if I have anything to do with it. But here's the thing. It, it puts up that whole competition, and I think we don't need that. Yeah. If that's what it's about, and you know, she has more than he has, and this and that, I think that it gives our kids this impression of we have to live up to this yeah, expectation. I agree. Too much bullying to begin with, too much online social media garbage. I have an idea, it will never come to fruition, but my idea is if you are mentioned in a post and you don't like it, you should be able to remove it. I, I call social media, like Twitter in particular, it's like the world's largest bathroom wall. Anybody can put anything up on there. Right. It may or may not be true. But on a bathroom wall, at least you have the ability to paint over it sure. physically. Sure. If you're mentioned in a oh, post and I, you don't like the, the way you're being talked said. about, yes. you should be able to take it off. Just remove the tweet. 
Well, and then there's those that, you know, would argue freedom of expression. Sure. And they have that right to sure. say whatever the hell they want. Sure. But then don't want. complain about how divided we are as a country. And you know what? If you're going to say something to me, say it to my face. Exactly. Don't hide behind a computer screen. And I think if, if you're being talked about, you should be able to control whether or not it's true or whether or not if you want it out there. Yeah. Again, I mean, it goes back to privacy, and I know that we, we have less and less of that. As, as we well, see. I, I'm just going to say that I'm impressed that you're even able to carry on a conversation right now, Jay, because, <laughs> you know, social media is new to you. I'm consumed with this, as you can see. You're a super poster. I'm a never poster. I've got five posts. I've only had this account for, I don't know, two weeks 24 maybe. 24 hours. Um, Channel 3 was kind enough to start it for me. <laughs> um, my thing's Twitter. It's so much easier. You can, for me, anyhow. Well, it's it's in, it's out, you're done. Like, you say what's on your mind, it's That's out of the it. universe. And it's I'm not sentence. big about, I'm not big on sharing pictures. And you're not even on Facebook. I am not on Facebook. Right. Yeah. Why should I be? Why shouldn't you be? What, wh why are you against it? I'm more of a face-to-face -face social person. You can still do I that. I think the behind-the-scenes social is going to kill a generation's ability to communicate face-to-face. Because -face, they don't have to. Right. We grew up where we had to. I understand that, but I do think that we have to conform to the change that is happening. Well, you can conform. I'm a nonconformist. Oh, I've conformed. Next up, a fan goes to a baseball game and gets blasted with one of those guns. We've seen them. They shoot out T-shirts. <gasps> this is a picture of his eye. The guy was severely Poor injured. Guy. He was knocked unconscious. He was concussed. And he, as you can tell by that picture, he has some retinal damage to his right eye. Um, I smell a lawsuit, so we're bringing in our legal expert, Stephanie Haney. Good afternoon to you. Hey, Steph. Hi, Jay. Hi, Ollie. Thanks for bringing me here today. So there's really two questions here. First, is this the kind of accident that you would expect might happen at a baseball stadium or that you've been told might happen? And then the second question is, is there anything special about the way this accident happened? Right. So when we talk about the first question, we're talking about assumption of risk. And what that means is if you do something dangerous that you know is dangerous, we sort of voluntarily assume that we might be injured. Sometimes that's really obvious, like if you're rock climbing or something, sometimes you have to be told that in a contract. And Major League Baseball tickets are a contract. So there's language on the back of those tickets that says you assume the risk of danger and injury if you are injured in something incidental to the game of baseball or any other event at the stadium. That also includes entertainment and promotions associated with the game. Including the t-shirts. Inclu possibly including the t-shirts. Okay, but my question, Stephanie, is there, there's negligence here on the behalf of the Mets employee. Like, I, I, I don't think you should safely assume that you're going to get shot in the face with a t-shirt cannon. Well, that's the second That was question. human error. Exactly. Is there anything special that happened related to this accident? So when we think of that question, we have to look at exactly how it happened. Now, according to the lawsuit, mm -hmm. the person who was operating this gun picked it up to fire it and then dropped it because there might have been some kind of issue with the gun, and then it fired while it was pointed directly at the front row where yeah. Alex Swanson was standing. And he was in the front row. Another yeah, element to the sure, equation. sure, but I don't think he can reasonably expect that the gun will misfire. I think you can reasonably expect that a foul ball is going to come screaming into your section. I'm more nervous about that. That happens, yeah. and that is part of the deal. But the T-shirt thing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't reasonably expect because I'm in the front row, I can get nailed in the face with a T-shirt gun. Well, there's two factors to consider here. One, was there something wrong with the gun? Should the Mets have known that, or could they have known that? And two, was there a negligence at play because the person who operated it pointed it at the front row? Right. And that's yeah. what potentially makes. Do you this get a sense one way or another that this guy will, will prevail or no? I think there's a really good chance he gets a big paycheck out of this. Yeah. One way or another, whether they settle the loss. If I'm the Mets, I settle. They win. Yeah, oh. I, I, I settle because I wouldn't want to put this in the hands of a jury. No. <laughs> I, I definitely would not. If you don't settle, your fan base is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, baseball has a whole other can of fish open, uh, can of worms open with the baseball streaming into the, to, into the stands. Oh, right. Let's see if they can take care of this. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Stephanie. Stephanie. We appreciate it. Next twist, a twist on sleepovers. This is an incredible story. A mom of a 10-year-old girl decided that she was going to allow her 10-year-old to have a sleepover. But Holly, this sleepover came with some pretty strict rules. She actually drew up a contract that all of the attendees had to sign. You're 10, and mm -hmm. you're signing a sleepover contract. Right. So here are the rules. Um, no touching or tickling. Um, I, that could be reasonable or, uh, or not. Or, or creepy. No nudity. I mean, I, I think well, that kind of goes without saying. I hope not. But, you know, she They're put it in ten. there. Yeah. No disruptions. 
that can be, I don't know what uh, that that's very means. vague, yeah. and no complaining. Which, what, about like the macaroni and cheese? Or I about mean? having to sign a contract. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. If you, if you sign the contract, you're allowed to come over, and if you abide by all of these rules, the next day, this, on Sunday morning, the mother will take all of the girls out and treat them to brunch. Mm -hmm. Is it, you're a mom of a young girl who has sleepover? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, hogwash all the way around. This is the contract. Yeah, and you're probably not allowing your daughter to go to a sleepover. I would no, no. If that was in place, that is would, it a little creepy it, that there are so many rules? It's very creepy to me. I would question a lot of the things. Well, all of them really. I mean, some of them were borderline just bizarre. Yeah, and the no touching or tickling. Which makes me say, why do you have to say that? Did that happen before? Yeah, it's, it Did is. Did you have an incident? Right, I mean, right. I'm that mom. Yeah. I'm going to go, you know? This I'm is, all for structure. This is my I, daughter. I love structure. Oh, I love I rules. Love a routine. And even the reward system. I thought that was nice. You know, if you play That's by the nice. rules, we're going to do a, a brunch tomorrow. Right. But How you, about just don't blast the music till 4 a.m. and, you know, we'll go get our nails done tomorrow, girls? I right. Mean, I don't need a contract. And what happens if one of the girls breaks the rule? Does that mean, uh, a rule, does that mean that the brunch is off for all the other girls? Now you're putting undue pressure on the girl. That Undue pressure broke one and, of the rules. and in a sense a little bit of bullying by the mommy because at that point do these kids like feel the pressure all night of yeah. oh, I hope I'm conforming to the rules? They have enough to deal with. They're ten. Let them have fun. Let them be ten. Please. And we monitor our kids' activities when they when there's a sleepover. If you hear something that sounds like it could be a problem, you go up and you take a look. Yes. And you handle it that way. I'm in that but. bedroom faster than <laughs> Wonder Woman. <laughs> Don't make ten year olds sign a contract, no. please. There's plenty of time later in life for that. Okay, next on lunch break, actor Liam Neeson has a very particular set of skills, and he has brought those skills to Cleveland. We're going to tell you why he's here when lunch break comes right back. I thought he was going to be here today. No, we couldn't bring him in. Uh, busy schedule. <laughs> lunch break. I love this video. We love dogs here. Mm -hmm. This dog has separation anxiety. His owner is changing the oil on his car oh. and look where he, look where he's decided to right, camp out right for the right day. Daddy's belly. I love you, dad. Yes. Unconditional love. That's what that is. <laughs> that is so cool. Hey, I just figured out that I can like Heighten the chair. Yeah, now you I were down like, a little bit. Right. We I brought th you I, up. I thought I would need a booster seat to have lunch with you. But. Your dog does something really okay, well, bizarre. I, I have a couple of dogs. I have Otis and Maya. You've okay. got a dog. Yeah, I have two as well. Got to meet them. Yep. And well, so Otis thinks he's a cat. So <laughs> the reality is, is Otis is a, a Shih Tzu, and so is Maya. He jumps on my counter. Now that's not a, you know, it's not low. It's like your typical like 
countertops. He jumps the up there on his own. Jumps up there. No and steps. And drinks water. He's like a cat. A, like a cat. He's like cat dog. You have the first Shih Tzu cat. I don't know. He's definitely unique. My other one doesn't do anything like that. All right. I Handsome dog. Yeah, thank you. Handsome dog. Okay, I'll what's hot in Cleveland right now? Our digital correspondent, Stephanie Haney, back with us to tell us what's big. Hello, Steph. Hey, Steph. Hey. Back again, guys. This is what's trending right now on WKYC.com. First up is a three news exclusive. There's a lawsuit that's been filed against Altman Hospital related to a veteran's death. The accident leading up to his death was horrific enough. He was pinned under a lawnmower and ended up brain dead and later died at the hospital. But for some reason, the way his body was held before it got to the coroner did not stop the decomposing process. And we have the lawsuit up on the site where you can read it in full. We've also, we do also have some happier news for you though. Uh, there's, a, there's a big name in town. This guy is here. He's been spotted filming his new movie in Cleveland and Parma. Liam Neeson shooting the Minuteman. So far, they were spotted at Charlie's Doghouse Diner in Cleveland and Parma's Last Stop Bar, uh, taking advantage of the controversial Ohio film tax credit. And while we're all very interested in Liam Neeson being here, there's also some news for people who uh, want to get out of Dodge. Southwest <laughs> is having their three-day sale that's back. So winter flights out of Cleveland starting at $49. And that sale is going to run between November 13th and February 12th. So you've got 72 hours, so right after the show, you want to go book your flights at Southwest, and you right. can catch that and on we, our website. We need to stand in line immediately so we get in that Group A. Yeah, you that's important. you got to get in that Group A boarding in Southwest. That very is very important. important. Otherwise, like, it's a game changer. i got to tell you, I've tried that $49 travel, and right. you can go to, like, Pocatello, Idaho, and, <laughs> and there are restrictions on that. You want to go Tuesday morning at 7 o'clock, and I, I've never bought a ticket for $49. No, it's so, never quite that. Skeptical here. Just telling you. Next on Lunch Break. Secrets to happiness. Advice from a man who's overcome every obstacle thrown at him. I love him already. To the how to live a happy life story in just a second, but first, sometimes uh, it requires sleep. It does something <laughs> that Holly knows nothing about, Stephanie. Well, that's a that's a very timely comment because Isaac Abadi just chimed in. He wants to know if you ever sleep, Holly. Yeah, right. And everybody is Do really you? excited. You're on TV eight hours a day. Freak of nature is how I describe it. Yeah. What do you get a night? M average? Yeah. Three to four. Not enough. Hours. I'm gonna play Dr. J. That's not enough. You need more sleep, Holly. Mm. You need, eventually, it catches up to you. Not me. It will. Not me. Just wait. Do you drink coffee? 
Nope. Then stop talking. <laughs> so you're you're powered by caffeine. <laughs> I am so powered. It's uh, running through it. these veins as we speak. Holly's a happy person. Anybody that knows her knows that. I am a happy person. But there are people that can use tips on how to live a happy life. And that's where Austin Love comes in. He's going to introduce us now to the happiest person he knows. Watch this carefully. You're so going to love this. All right, follow me. The saying goes, a bad day at the beach is better than a good day at work. Barry Henkin. I love my job. I like making people happy and people feel welcome. Would not agree with that saying. Thank you, sir. Welcome. The unofficial mayor of Menorah Park Senior Living Center for the past 38 years. There are days I don't know if I work for him or he works for me, and that's okay. His campaign is to spread positivity to everyone he meets. His official job is to assist residents going to and from physical therapy. But there isn't anything that he won't do to lend a helping hand. If you look at the heart of this community and what really makes Menorah Park special, he's at the core. Part-time gardener. Five days a week, every morning. Greeter and full-time spreader of joy. I always have a positive attitude. I always smile and I'm always happy to see them, give them a hug and make them feel good and say, I'm glad to see you today. I hope you have a nice day. Born with Asperger's syndrome, Barry doesn't let his challenges define who he is. I look at myself as a human being like you and me. I tell people, look at me for who I am. Don't judge me the way I wear my clothes or the way I look, but look at me as Barry Hankin. He defines himself by how he chooses to live. If you talk to Barry about it, what he really says, everybody has challenges. He's got his set of challenges. Everybody else has their set of challenges. You just keep overcoming. Overcoming challenges and spreading happiness no matter the circumstances. Yeah. Just be happy, have a positive attitude, and make sure when you wake up each morning, say to yourself, I'm gonna have a good day, I'm gonna do my best, look my best, and do the best I can. God bless him. There it is, well, yeah, absolutely. You said it going in that we're both happy people, but yeah. what I, and I don't know if you agree or disagree with this, but I feel like positivity is definitely a choice, A. Absolutely. And it's not easy, B. I no, think people, it's not. a lot of times, you know, look at someone that is perceived as happy and think, oh, look at that. They yeah. just say, it is probably harder than the alternative on a lot of days. Yeah. It's, it's a choice. I believe that. I believe that we control the temperature in our Petri dish. Whatever, wh wherever we are, it, we, it's up to us to find the positive right. and to push away the negative and set our own temperature, so to speak. And also, this is one of my favorite sayings in the world. We're all responsible for the energy we bring into the room. So true. And if everyone kind of lived by that, I think they'd be a little more cognizant of the fact that your energy can rub off, good or bad, oh. and it often does. I mean, so I be that positive it. light in the room. And you've been there. Like, you've walked into a party, and you can, like, oh, yeah. feel yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, that's when I go directly to the, you know, punch bowl. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> that's hopefully spiked with something. Um, we want to share this picture with you. I love this. Here is a happy kid. He's from Nampa, Idaho. Now, you're probably wondering why the smile, Holly. His neighbor gave him one piece of advice before he had his first school picture taken. He said, smile very big. And boy, did he. And we're smiling with you, friend. <laughs> That's how you get your school picture taken. I love him. I do, too. I would use that as a Christmas card. <laughs> I would show that at every wedding and function. Would you use that as your life. picture on social media for a day? Yes. Okay, change your, would, I want you to change your logo or icon, whatever it's called right now. It would bring We're joy right back. to all of you, right? I want you to make that kid your favorite. <laughs>
Tonight's a very big night at Legends in Parma because they're down to two cards now in the Queen of Hearts game. So it's got to happen. Yeah, this is week number 53. Two cards remaining. One of them is the Queen of Hearts. I'm holding in my hand two cards. And we're going to simulate the game tonight. And by the way, I think the pot's like $5 million. Yeah. So I'm going to mix these up, and Holly is going to, we're just going to pretend that she gets her name picked. Mm -hmm. You get to pick. Oh, my goodness. You just won $5 million fake dollars. Very good. So it's a 50-50 chance, that obviously, there's two cards up. Right? Okay, now you mix them up, and, and you go. Um, if no one wins tonight, next week it's simply a drawing for whatever the pot is. Right. Um, and I'm going to go right there. I won, I won two. That's incredible. I, think he, I, I, I went to the right like you did, and I thought he won't pick to the right. I, wasn't I even, did. I, See what I did there? Yeah, but I yeah. wasn't even thinking. I was going all psychology was, on you. I went with my gut. Yeah. Uh, good Your luck to good. whoever gets their name pulled tonight. Yes. Five million dollars are on the line. And like I said, if no one gets the Queen of Hearts tonight, whoever wins the poll next week, they get the money. And listen. Thank you so much for being part of our streaming experience yeah. today because this was a first. Make sure you like, follow Jay. He is now <laughs> on Instagram. I want to see how many more followers we All get right. by the end of I think of I have today. six right now. My kids are following me. All right, me. let's get you up to at least 50. See you tomorrow on lunch break. Thanks for having me. Thanks for making free news a part of your afternoon. Watch us live wherever you are, on our website, on our apps, and on Hulu and Roku. No matter where you are, free news is there.